What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question. We are given three points as the vertices for a parallelogram. So we have A, two and three, B, eight and one, and C, 11 and five. And then we have to find the coordinates of the fourth vertex, vertex D. So as a quick drawing of what we're gonna be working with, we have a parallelogram which usually looks like this. It could also be a rectangle, a square. Those are cases for a parallelogram, but usually it's going to be like this. And then we have coordinates. So remember when you're labeling these with letters, the vertices, you wanna make sure that you're going in order either clockwise or counterclockwise. So usually I go clockwise and I start over here at the bottom left, so we got A, we got B, C, and D, like that. But you could also do A, B, C, and D as well. So from here, let's actually label these coordinates. We got two, three, we got uh, eight and one, we have 11 and five, and then vertex D, we're actually solving for that. So that's going to be X and Y. The question is, how do we solve for this vertex here? There's actually multiple ways to do this. The way that I'm gonna show you is my preferred way, but whichever way you're doing it, whichever way your teacher shows you, just make sure that you're getting the same solution that I'm gonna get at the end. So with a parallelogram, if you remember, what that means, the property of it, is that the opposite sides are parallel. So that means this side, is parallel to this side, right? Side AB is parallel to side CD. And then side uh, AD is parallel to side BC. And knowing those two properties, we can actually make two equations because notice we have two unknowns to solve for x and y. And usually when you have two unknowns, you got to make two equations and then you could do substitution and elimination to solve for them. So we can use those pairs of slopes being parallel to make those two equations. So what I'm going to do is uh, label these. So let's start off with a, b being parallel to c, d. So we'll have x1, y1, then we'll have x2, y2. And then for this line here, same thing, I'm gonna label this x1, y1. This is gonna be x2, y2, the x and y that we're solving for. So remember, this slope, let's write it down just in general. Slope AB has to equal the slope of CD. That's the first equation we're gonna make. Now, what's the slope of AB gonna be? Well, it's gonna be Y2 minus Y1, so we're gonna have three minus one over X2 minus X1, two minus eight. And then what's the slope of CD gonna be? Well, same thing, X2, which is just, or uh, sorry, Y2, which is just Y, that's what we're solving for, so that's gonna be a variable here, Y minus Y1, which is five, over x2, x, uh, minus x1, which is 11. Okay, so that is one of the equations. We're gonna have to simplify this further, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. And then I'm gonna create the second equation. The second equation, we're gonna have the slope of BC equaling the slope of AD. So relabeling these over here, if this is, if we're working with this line here, this is x2, y2, I'm gonna let this be x1, y1, then I'm gonna let this be x2, y2, this is gonna be x1, y1, right? Just relabeling these because now we're looking at line AD and BC. So what's the slope of BC going to be? Well, it's going to be Y2 minus Y1. So we're going to have 5 minus 1 over X2 minus X1, 11 
minus A. And then that's going to equal the slope of AD, which is Y2, which is the Y, minus the Y1. So we'll have Y minus 3 over uh, X2, which is X, minus X1, which is 2, like that. And those are the two equations. So two equations, two unknowns that we could solve for. And now we know what to do algebraically. So to simplify this, what, um, what you want to do is first simplify this side. So 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. And then we'll have y minus 5 over x minus 11 like that. This negative you could put here. You could put here. I'm just actually going to just bring it up. And then actually negative 2 over 6, that simplifies to negative 1 over 3. Whenever you have a chance to simplify, you want to take it. It actually doesn't matter if you didn't simplify here and then you end up working through the algebra. What we're going to end up doing is cross multiplying. So even if you cross multiplied here, it would be fine. You would still get the same solution in the end. It's just you would have to simplify more in the end. Right? So better to simplify initially to have less simplifying to do later on. Now from here, 5 minus 1, 4, 11 minus 8, 3. That's equal to y minus 3 over x minus 2, like that. Okay, so now we got two simplified equations to solve. And from here, the way you want to solve them, as I mentioned, is you actually want to cross multiply here to kind of get rid of these fractions. So if you do that, you'd end up with negative 1. So we'd have negative 1 times x minus 11. You want to make sure you put that in brackets, this times that. And then you'll have 3 bracket y minus 5. And then from here, you can simplify this. You can uh, distribute everything. So we'll have negative x plus 11 equals 3y minus 15, like that. And then let's actually bring uh, all of the letters to one side, all the numbers to the other. So I'm going to bring the negative 15 over 11 plus 15 would give us 26. And then the negative x I'll bring over. So we'll have x plus 3y. Okay, so this simplifies into that right there. And then same thing here, we'll have 4 times x minus 2 equals 3 times y minus 3, 4x minus 8 equals 3y minus 9. Let's bring the, from here, uh, it doesn't matter, let's bring the 3y over. And then I'm going to bring the negative 8 over. So we'll have negative 9 plus 8, which would give us negative 1. And so we have that um, next equation. And so now notice how we got rid of the fractions. And now we have two equations, two unknowns. We can use substitution or elimination. Now what I'm going to do personally is substitution because notice this x here. It's by itself, so I'm going to isolate for the x in this equation. So we'd end up with, uh, bring the 3y over, so we'd have 26 minus 3y is equal to x. And then I'm going to take this expression and plug it in for this x. So we would end up with 4 bracket 26 minus 3y minus 3y equals negative 1. Now you don't necessarily have to go this way. You can go about it a different way. Just make sure you're getting the same x and y that I'm getting at the end. So from here we could distribute the 4. 4 times 26 gives us 104. 4 times negative 3y gives us minus 12y minus 3y equals negative 1 like that. This here these are like terms. That simplifies to minus 15y. Then we got the negative 1. I'm going to bring the negative 1 over, and then I'll bring the negative 15y over. So negative 1 comes over. 104 plus 1 gives us 105. 
this ends up being 15y, positive 15y, divide both sides by 15, we end up with y equaling uh, 7. All right, 105 divided by 15 gives us 7. And then to get the x value, you could plug it into either. We already isolated for the x here, so I'll just plug in this y over here. So we'll have 26 minus 3 times 7 equals x, which is 26 minus 21, which gives us uh, 5. Right, so x is 5, y is 7, and then that ends up being v solution. Now, at this point, sometimes they may ask you to check your answer, and the way you can check your answer is by checking, is by going through the steps that we've gone through where we have to confirm something's a parallelogram. And the way we do that is we find all four slopes and make sure that the pairs are equal. That's how you can verify your solution. So if we quickly do that, let's just find all four slopes here. So um, actually, we already found slope AB. Remember, that was the left side of that first equation that we worked with. I forget what we got. We got 3 minus 1, 2 over negative 6, right? It was negative 1 over 3. So we already had this slope, and then we already had the slope of BC. Right, because those two slopes weren't dependent on this vertex D, and what we got there was 4 over 3. Yes, I remember now. So really, we already had those slopes from before, and so we just have to find the slope of AD, make sure that it's equal to the BC slope, and then we have to find the slope of CD, make sure it's equal to the AB slope. Okay, so let's start off with finding the um, CD slope. So this is x2, y2. Let's let this be x1, y1. So we'd have 7 minus 5, y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1. 5 minus 11. We'd end up with 2 over negative 6, which indeed gives us negative 1 over 3. So half of the verification is done now. And then we have to show that the BC slope is the same as the AD slope. So we already have these labeled x1, y1, x2, y2. So the um, AD slope is going to be 7 minus 3 over... 5 minus 2, which indeed would give us 4 over 3, which is the same slope as the BC slope. Right, so we could be pretty confident that 5 and 7 is the correct solution. So if you get a question like this, that's the way you do it. Set up two equations. You're going to have two unknowns to solve for, and they're going to be in fraction format, so you're going to have to cross multiply and sort of get them into nicer formats where there's no fractions, but then you just do substitution or elimination to get the core.